If you thought underneath was weird, hold on to your butts. Today we are going track by track with Code Orange's new album, The Above. <laughs> First up, we have Never Fall Apart. Weird, weird way to open this record up, if you ask me. Like, at first I'm on board with the industrial rhythms and Jamie's sardonic vocals, but then this gets alternated with a clean piano and Reba singing before going full beatdown. I mean, in a way, it does sort of summarize the off-kilter stylistic shifts that the album goes through, but I don't really find it to be an enjoyable track on its own, which is not something you should ever say about the song you open your album with. Gonna have a bad time. First impression are everything, and if it were up to me, I would have cut this and kicked things off with the next track since I feel like it does a better job at accomplishing basically the same thing. Which brings us to Theater of Cruelty. This one opens up with a glitchy electronic beat and drifty atmosphere with a kind of hyper pop vibe. It reminds me of something off of The Arms last album mixed with maybe some of Deftone's chiller moments. Except this one periodically explodes into bouts of pummeling metallic hardcore, calling back to the previous two albums, even literally bringing back the chorus from In Fear. You could make some load comparisons, but it's a bit more experimental than that. Which brings us to Take Shape. Really leaning into the 90s alternative vibes on this one, and I have to say, having grown up and started getting interested in music around that time, I think they nailed the rebellious, grungy vibes. I will say that despite being a huge fan of the Smashing Pumpkins going back to that era, I was pretty disappointed in the Billy Corgan feature. It just feels so separate from the rest of the song. Cut it and honestly, I think it's a better track from my point of view. The hypnotic beat, raunchy distortion, and highly infectious chorus are more than enough. Like seriously, I could not stop singing along to this one. Then there's The Mask of Sanity Slips. This one has kind of a new metal sort of slipknot sounding intro, but then ultimately reminds me the most of Marilyn Manson, from the warbly guitar effects on the verses to the very particular harsh vocal inflection on the chorus. It would be right at home on an album like Mechanical Animals or Holywood. Not one of my favorites and maybe a bit longer than it needs to be, but still a fun one that's been growing on me. Then we have Mirror. I love this song. Like honestly, it might be my favorite on the album, which is weird since it's so different from every everything else and is just totally not metal. The first time I heard it, I was all in with the stripped back acoustic vibes and Reba getting all moody and Fiona Apple with it. Considering how much I loved her guest spot on Greg Puciato's album, this only makes me more excited for more genre sidesteps from her. She has a very unique voice that is just so unlike any of the popular female singers out there right now, and it just hasn't been produced to shit either. Honestly, stunning. It makes me tear up a little bit every time I listen to it. That's followed by a drone opting out of the hive. One of the better straight heavy tracks on the album that feels more like material from underneath. I'll admit that I find lyrics about being a non-conformist to be kind of cringe, especially with the more hip hop inspired delivery early on, but the chug heavy chorus is super hype and it should work well as a brain dead gym anthem. Simple, maybe even a little stupid, but angsty and effective. Mungle like candy. Then we get I Fly. Easily my least favorite song on the album to the point that I just skip it for the most part. It's a shame because I generally look forward to Reba fronted tracks, but this one actually kind of annoys me. Admittedly, it does remind me of some other 90s songs I can think of, but I just find the songwriting repetitive and kind of irritating from the bland guitars to the vocal cadence. The second song that given the choice I would have just cut from the track listing and left as a B-side. That's followed by Splinter of the Soul. Another cool, almost dancey beat and sick bass rumble opening this one that gives me nostalgia for old days listening to The Prodigy. Love that, but then another weaker chorus. It's kind of catchy, but in a really basic feeling and even corny kind of way. I like the noisy part towards the end too, but this one just feels really half-baked with elements that kind of clash. The Game. Another personal favorite for me and a total ripper. Love those harmonic squeals of the guitars and disgustingly brutal gang vocal moments. This one calls all the way back to forever and is highly likely to double my bench press. I'm all about the band experimenting, but I hope that they never ventured too far away from hard shit like this.
Then there's Grooming My Replacement, arguably the only case on the entire album of two ripping metallic hardcore tracks right next to each other. Another banger with explosive guitars and again those gnarly forever vocal cadences. I also love the primal sounding groove of the bass on the verses and the little wailing guitar hook. It's no kill the creator or spy, but it's still likely to stir some shit at the next live performance. Then we have Snapshot, another series of more alternative tinged Reba tracks here, this one toying with breakbeats and a kind of 2000s punky chorus. Think the Prodigy meets like Rise Against or something like that. I'm sure there's an even better comparison, but that's what came to mind listening to this one. Then there's a quieter bridge with some strings that's pretty cool, building into the big finale. Of the more alternative rock sounding tracks, this is probably my second favorite after Take Shape. Unfortunately, it's kind of downhill from here. Next up is Circle Through. I have similar thoughts thoughts about this one as I fly. It's definitely better as I at least don't feel like skipping it, but it still feels kind of like B-side territory to me. What ultimately saves it from the chopping block though is another admittedly catchy chorus and very strong vocal performance from Reba on the bridge. She really puts her full voice into this one, making for a strong ending. Then there's But A Dream. Kind of similar notes here, solid enough track, but I haven't fully connected with it either. The acoustic sections again have that spooky Manson vibe, but this time the chorus feels a little on the weaker side. Reba belting it out again, but the melody and lyrics leave something to be desired. And then closing with The Above. Maybe some mild later Nine Inch Nails vibes with the synth on this one. Big dramatic build with the pounding toms and wailing effects laden guitar leads. Jamie starting at a soft whisper and building slowly into a scornful snarl. Solid attention to arrangement here, adding more and more layers towards the end with the infectious backing vocals and more strings. Not one of my favorite tracks overall, but a fitting closer to the album, I think. So ultimately, Ultimately, I love the experimentation, but it definitely feels pretty clunky and unfocused. Underneath didn't stretch itself quite as far in terms of diversity, but where it did experiment, I feel like the album still came together as a cohesive statement, with a pretty consistent flow from beginning to end. In a way, this oddly reminds me of what Avenged Sevenfold did this year, except I had much higher expectations going into this one. And ultimately, I'm totally split on how I feel about it. On the one hand, I'm pretty disappointed because track for track, it's easily my least favorite album from them so far. But on the other, I think some of the experimentation really pays off for me in surprising ways rather than just sticking to a safe formula like they could have. And ultimately, I respect that even if it doesn't always pay off. But if you do just want a straight rager, I definitely recommend the new Harm's Way album over this in a second. Turning to my three scales, I give it a C for enjoyability. When it hits, it hits, but when it doesn't, it doesn't. Inconsistent is definitely a key word here. I give it a B for musicianship. Again, I appreciate I appreciate the varied songwriting and overall the performances are strong even when the songs don't fully come together. And I give it an A for innovation. This is definitely the album's saving grace as you won't hear anything else like it this year. So overall I feel like it's kind of a B minus. It's at least too interesting to be a C plus. I'm hoping next time they can take what they've learned from this one and turn all of those cool ideas that they continue to come up with into something a little bit more cohesive. Check out this playlist for more metalcore and hardcore related videos or this one for my favorite albums of the year so far, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.